lay his hands on this. Yeah, we're going to have to more powerful than I will now call this meeting to order the 13th day of June, 2023. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Goodrich? Here. Councilmember Knudsen? Here. Gross? Wynn? Here. Jones? Here. We have Mayor Foster representing Coralville at our nation's capital, meeting with legislators. And in attendance here tonight are Coralville's uh, city administrator, deputy administrator, our city treasurer, city clerk, attorneys, and several other staff in the audience. Uh, approve the agenda, please. So move. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. All those opposed, motion approving the agenda has been passed. I will now award the Certificate of Appreciation to Randy's Carpets for their significant contributions to the community. Whereas, as part of celebrating its 150 years of rich history and bright future, the City of Coralville recognizes and values the dedication, commitment, and entrepreneurial spirit within our community. Local businesses and organizations keep our community, the state, and the American economy vibrant and strong. And whereas it is without question Randy's flooring exemplifies the spirit of local businesses within the Coralville community. And as whereas in 1969, Randy Ward got his first job offer installing carpet and vinyl after school and during the summer, which led to opening his own store with four employees named Randy's Carpets and Interiors right after completing finals from University of Iowa in 1976. And whereas Randy's Carpets and Interiors opened in its current location at 401 2nd Street, Coralville in 1977, and in the past 45 years, they have made renovations and expansions to warehouses throughout the area. Opened a Cedar <coughs> Rapids store, became employee owned in 2016, made name changes, and in 2019 built a new 46,350 square foot state-of-the-art warehouse located at 1930 James Street in Coralville. And whereas Randy's Flooring, with its tremendous buying power and product selection, employs over 60 knowledgeable, personable staff and have wonderful relationships with just as many independent installer con contractors. And whereas Randy's Flooring, staff are served and continue to serve and support the community in numerous local events, schools, fundraisers, and nonprofits, such as houses and homes, donating through the Cushion Campaign, which benefits the University of Iowa Steed Family Children's Hospital, and creatively participating in the Coralville 150 Wheat Pasting Project with the Coralville Library. Now, therefore, Having served and continuing to serve in the community of Coralville, the city of Coralville wishes to recognize Randy's flooring for their dedication to the citizens of Coralville and the surrounding community. Signed this 13th day of June, 2023, Lori Goodrich Pro Tem. Would you like to say a word? Sure. <laughs> Please. <laughs> So, so, so my speech is already wrong because I got thank you, Mayor. Oh, really? I got to I got to ad lib oh. already a little bit. So thank you and thank Please all the city state council your name. And, and and all of the uh, uh, the other people here at the city of Coralville. I really appreciate appreciate this honor. And I think it's appropriate to tell a story about how I got to Coralville. Um, in 1976, I started this little store in Iowa City, and I outgrew it already in a year. But space was pretty expensive. Iowa City was the big town, and Coralville was, well, it was Coralville. <laughs> So I decided to come out to Coralville. I'd get a lot more bang for my buck. And where it gets funny is the Iowa City people 47 years ago came right out and told me, you'll never make it clear out there in Coralville. <laughs> that was a long way to go. So they, they really gave me a hard time about leaving Iowa City and coming to Coralville. Well, I'm just proud to say we sure proved them wrong. <laughs> it was the best thing we ever did. Um, Randy's flooring could not have made it without so many loyal 
See, I get old and senile, I get a little teary-eyed. <laughs> but anyway, I couldn't have made it without so many loyal and long-term employees. A lot of them have 20 to 40 years experience. We have somebody that's been 41 years. Camille, 41 years. <laughs> we have Scott in the back with 33 years. Anybody else north of 30 here? Oh, Lynn and Mike, how many years for you two? 36. 36? 32. 32. So you see we have a lot of very, very long-term and loyal employees, and uh, without them, I wouldn't be up here tonight. So I thank each and every one of them. Okay. So when I started in, at Randy's out in Corval in 1977, Corval had 7,000 people. Can you tell I've listened to Rex for all these years? I like to, I like to do some of this history making of Corval. And, Unfortunately, I'm getting old enough, I know the stories, darn it. <laughs> so when I moved out here, Corval had 7,000 people, and we were a tiny little startup company. So it's nice to see that over the last 46, seven years, that Corval has grown to right at 25,000 people. I think it's the latest census I saw today, about 25,000 people. And Randy's Flooring has grown to be arguably the, longest, the largest flooring store in the state of Iowa. So we've gone a long way in 47 years, and I think the biggest thing is, is I attribute a lot of it to the people, to our customers. Uh, I think just being in Coralville and being in this whole region has been such a great deal. So for that, I thank everyone, and uh, I'm supposed to take whatever you're giving me and hand it to Dan, so I'll take this and give it to Dan. Dan Drombowski is the uh, general manager of Randy's Flooring. Dan comes with a lot of experience, and I think it's appropriate since I am officially retired that I accept the award and give it to Dan, and Dan can say a few words for the employees, and the, it's an ESOP now, so they all own it. And so I'm so proud of them for taking over what I built. Thank you. Obviously a hard act to follow, so I'll keep it short. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're just really excited about the growth that we have going in this community. Um, being the ESOP, I mean, we basically like Randy set it up for us to kind of like take the torch from him and um, we're excited to continue to do what we do and grow our business in this community and help the community grow I mean we're, we're a big company we have all the stuff that we need now as far as warehousing and things like that to continue to move the needle and meet the demand that the market you know has so um, that's really all I have and we appreciate you guys recognizing all of our achievements so thank you thank you Take a picture. <laughs> Can we get it with all the employees since it's their business? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'd be great. I think that's appropriate. We <laughs> still have some. We gotta have we gotta have some veterans up there first. Get up there. How you doing? I'm good. We will share. We should all share. Thank you. How's it going, Gary? Thank you. Next, we have two proclamations. Uh, one is for Pride Month, and the other is for Juneteenth. And I know we have some here in attendance to receive this Pride Month uh, proclamation. I'll read it first. Whereas supporting visibly, let me start again. Whereas <laughs> supporting visibility, dignity, and equality for LGBTQIA plus people in our diverse community calls for the month of June to be celebrated as Pride Month to educate and raise awareness to the history and current struggles of the LGBTQ community. 
whereas patrons and supporters of the Stonewall Inn in New York City resisted harassment that had become all too common for members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender LGBT community out of the events of June 1969 sparked the modern LGBTQIA liberation movement. Whereas LGBTQIA people continue to make great and lasting contributions with distinction and professionalism that strengthen the fabric of society and there are many well-respected LGBTQIA leaders in our schools and all professional fields including the arts and business communities and whereas the city of Coralville determines that LGBTQIA plus youth should feel safe and cared for without the fear of harassment. And LGBTQ plus families and seniors should be allowed to live their lives with dignity and respect. Whereas the city of Coralville congratulates the city of Iowa City in celebrating its 52nd annual Pride Festival on June 17th, 2023. And now therefore I, Lori Goodrich, Mayor, Pro Tem of the City of Coralville, Iowa, do hereby proclaim the month of June 2023 to be Pride Month. Signed this 13th day of June 2023, Lori Goodrich, Mayor Pro Tem. I believe we have someone here to receive this. Would you like to say a word? <laughs> and receive the proclamation? Please, yes. <laughs> And then we take a picture. Yeah. Great, we have pictures. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You Hi, my name is Tim Grady. Uh, I'm the coordinator of the LGBTQ program at United Action for Youth uh, based in Iowa City and serving uh, the Iowa City, Coralville, and greater area. Uh, we're very excited to be honored or to be asked to be here. Thank you so much. Um, we're happy to be receiving the proclamation for Pride Month again this year. Um, we've been part of the Pride celebrations in the Iowa City and Corville area for m most of our time. Uh, UAY has been around for the last 52 years, and we are very proud to have been supporting LGBT youth that entire time. Um, this year in particular feels uh, particularly important to be recognizing Pride Month as the state. We're very lucky to be in the Iowa City Coralville area uh, and uh, many in our community um, feel safe and feel recognized and feel honored here, whereas in the larger state of Iowa, um, that's not always the case. Uh, we are fortunately a very resilient as well as proud community. When I say resilient, I mean that we are able to do okay while still in pain. And I will say that the LGBTQ community in Iowa is in pain right now. Um, but we're very proud this month. We're proud to be part of Coralville and part of the Iowa City community. And we're very honored to accept the proclamation for today. Thank you so much. Thank you. independence for the pilgrims from the colonial rule of Great Britain came in the year 1776 following the Revolutionary War and whereas even after this independence was won for these people, the people brought from Africa to this country were still forced to remain in legalized human slavery. And whereas President Abraham Lincoln did sign an executive order in titles the Preliminary Emancipation Proclamation in September 1862. And this was a test to see how the American people 
would react to the idea of freeing the, freeing the human slaves from free labor, cruel treatment, sexual assaults, forced illiteracy, segregation of public services and amenities, and forced denouncement of their uh, African roots. And whereas in January 1863, President Lincoln issued the final Emancipation Proclamation, but the Confederate States of America did not honor it. After the Civil War and the defeat of the last troops in Galveston, Texas in June 19, 1865, the people of Africa descent were finally conditionally freed from slavery unless convicted of a crime. Whereas Juneteenth is a celebration of this historic event commemorating the national freeing of enslaved people in a way that cherishes the liberties of all now share. And now therefore be it resolved that I, Lori Goodrich, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Coralville, do join governments across the country to proclaim June 19th, 2023 as Juneteenth and urge all citizens to recognize this week by becoming aware of emancipation which affects the liberties of all people of, of color till the very day. And sign this 13th day of June, 2023, Lori Goodrich, Mayor Pro Tem. Is there someone here to, to receive this? Okay, we'll get this to the, to the right people. Thank you so much. We'll fix a couple things there. All right, moving on. Um, are there any community or community comments? And community comments is a time for audience members to speak to the council about items not on the agenda or items that are on the agenda and not subject to a public hearing. Each speaker has five minutes. Is there anyone that would like to speak to us tonight? Okay. We'll move on. Uh, number seven is Fifth Street Water Main Improvements. It's a public hearing. I will now open the public hearing on the plans, specifications, estimate of cost, and form of contract for the Fifth Street Water Main Improvements. This project will install new 12-inch diameter water main along Fifth Street from 20th Avenue East to Morrison Creek. Is there anyone who would like to speak to us? Are there any written comments? No written. Okay, I think I'll close the public hearing and consider the resolution, please. Resolution approving the plan, specifications, estimate of cost and form of contract, ordering bids, setting a date for the receiving of bids and directing posting of the bid letting, all for the Fifth Street Water Main Improvement 2023 project. Introduced for adoption by Councilmember Knudsen, seconded by. Second. Are there any comments or questions from the council? Are we separating the projects then? Is, yes. this, is that, that part of that process now? Yes. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilmember Goodrich? Aye. Wynn? Aye. Jones? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. All ayes with gross absent. Uh, the next is the number eight Hyatt Regency restaurant and lounge renovation project. It, this is a public hearing. Uh, this project is for the renovation of the bar and restaurant area of the Hyatt Regency Coralville Hotel and Conference Center. I'll now open the public hearing. Uh, is there anyone that would like to speak to us about this? Are there any written? No written. No written. Okay, we'll <coughs> close the public hearing and consider the resolution. Resolution approving the plan, specifications, estimate of cost, and form of contract, ordering bids, setting a date for the receiving of bids, and directing posting of the bid letting, all for the Hyatt Regency Restaurant and Lounge renovation project. Introduced for adoption by Councilmember Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Jones. Are there any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Councilman Wynn? Aye. Jones? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. All passed with gross absent. 
Can we hear the bid report? Yep, uh, we re took bids on this project to keep it on schedule last Thursday. Uh, we received one bid in the amount of $1,252,000 for this project uh, from M.A. Mortensen Company of Minneapolis. And they were the only bid, and they are also the one who the uh, contractor has done all the other work on the hotel, so we would recommend approval to M.A. Mortensen in the amount of $1,252,000. Thank you. We didn't have an estimate on that, did we? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, uh, Marcus um, Construction folks did, and this was under that estimate. Oh, great. Okay, we'll consider the resolution accepting the bids and awarding the contract for the Hyatt Regency Restaurant and Lounge Renovation Project. Resolution accepting <laughs> bids and awarding the contract for the Hyatt Regency Restaurant and Lounge Renovation Project. It's introduced for adoption by Council Member Wynn, seconded by. Second. Uh, seconded by Knutson. Any more questions or? I would just make the comment that this will be done in two um, divisions so that we can continue to stay in operation. And so the first part that will be done is the coffee shop and bar area. And there will be a temporary wall put up between that and the restaurant. So the restaurant will stay open and then the new door will be put in so that the restaurant can um, operate um, by um, time that uh, football season starts and college starts back up we'll have that section done open the whole thing and then um, after um, the football season we will close the restaurant portion and um, uh, do the renovation there and be completed in February um, of 2024 with the whole um, operation while the um, coffee shop and bar area are closed for renovation, there will be temporary facilities set up. I have a little comment. I would, I, sister and, and I took my dad there about a week ago and had a great meal. They're still, they're still serving really good food, so yeah. don't let that construction deter you from, from going there. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilmember Jones. Aye. Knudsen. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Quinn. Aye. Okay, and then let's consider the next resolution, Don. Resolution approving the contract and bond documents for the Hyatt Regency Restaurant and Lounge Renovation Project is introduced or adopted by Council Member Jones, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Knudsen. Roll call, please. Council Member Knudsen? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Jones? Aye. Uh, all passed with gross absent. Uh, we'll do lot one and lot two of Ridgeview addition. And the note is the rezoning for the portion of Ridgeview addition, that is lot one, is for a medium density res residential development on a 6.75 acre parcel on the east side of Crossing Ridge Drive and will consist of one fiveplex, 13 fourplexes, and two duplexes for a total of 61 units. The rezoning for the portion of the Ridgeview addition that is lot two is for a medium density residential development on the 5.61 acre parcel on the west side of Crossing Ridge Drive and will consist of one fiveplex, 12 fourplexes, and one threeplex for a total of 56 units. Ordinance, please, or resolution, please, first. Resolution approving the final plat for Ridgeview Edition, Coralville, Iowa, introduced for adoption by Councilman Knutson, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gwen. Any questions or comments, or should we continue with this to be the ordinance? We have to vote on that first. Well, we have to vote. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. Roll call, please. Councilmember Goodrich? Aye. Wynn? Aye. Jones? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. All ayes with gross absent. Next, the ordinance, please. Ordinance number 2023-1006, an ordinance amending the Colville Zoning Ordinance, the same being ordinance number 2020-1019 as previously amended, rezoning certain property located within the corporate limits of the city of Coralville, Johnson County, Iowa, to RPUD2 uh, residential plan unit development 2 district from 
for it's introduced for a second consideration. Excuse me, by Councilman Gingrich. Second, second by Jones. Second. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Councilmember Quinn. Aye. Jones. Aye. Knudsen. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Thank you. All ayes with gross absent. We'll entertain a motion to collapse the third reading of the ordinance. All in favor? We, we have to have a roll call on that we one. We have a roll call. For that type of motion. Thank you. So we, so we, we need a motion. Yep. Who would like to move? I make a motion that we uh, collapse the third reading of the ordinance. Thank you. Second. Okay, okay. Second. motion by Jones, second. By when? Roll call, please. Councilmember Jones. Aye. Knudsen. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Win. Aye. And now we'll go to the ordinance. Ordinance number 2023-1006, an ordinance amending the Colville zoning ordinance, the same being ordinance number 2020-1009, as previously amended, rezoning certain property located within the corporate limits of the city of Colville, Johnson County, Iowa, and generally known as Lot 1 Riverview Edition from C2 Arterial Commercial District to RPUD2 Residential Planned Unit Development 2 District, introduced for adoption and third and final consideration by Council Member Wen, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Knudsen. Roll call, please. Council Member Knudsen? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Jones? Aye. Then E will. Oh, all eyes with Groves absent. We'll consider the resolution approving the PUD site plan. Resolution approving the PUDB site plan for Lot 1 Ridgeview Edition, Coralville, Iowa. Introduced for adoption by Councilmember Jones, seconded by. Second. <coughs> seconded by Wynn. Roll call, please. Councilmember Goodrich. Aye. Wynn. Aye. Jones. Aye. Knudsen. Aye. All eyes with Groves absent. And F, consider resolution approving the site plan for Lot 2, please. Resolution approving the PUDB <coughs> site plan for Lot 2, Riverview Edition, Corville, Iowa. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Knudsen, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Jones. Roll call, please. Council Member Jones. Aye. Knudsen. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Wynn. Aye. All ayes with girls absent. Uh, 10, number 10, Lot 3, Red Hawk Subdivision, Part 2. This rezoning is for a 2,337-square-foot standalone drive through restaurant on a 1.88-acre site. Ordinance, please. Ordinance number 2023-1007, an ordinance amending the Colville Zoning Ordinance, the same being Ordinance number 2020-1009, as previously amended. Rezoning certain property located within the corporate limits of the city of Coralville, Johnson County, Iowa, and generally known as Lot 3, Red Hawk Subdivision Part 2 from CPUD 1 Commercial Planned Unit Development 1 District to CPUD 2 Commercial Planned Unit Development 2 District. Introduced for adoption, second consideration by Council Member Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Wynn. Are there any more comments or consideration? This is our second consideration. Roll call, please. Councilmember Quinn. Aye. Jones. Aye. Knudsen. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Number 11. Oh, all eyes with gross absent, excuse me. Number 11, Arena Co. Consider a resolution. Resolution ratifying a loan to Arena Co. is introduced for adoption by. Councilmember Jones, seconded by. Second. Second by Knudsen. And this is not to exceed the $500,000. Any questions or comments? Yeah, I would just comment that when the original uh, plans and financing for the arena and field house were put together, um, there was no um, funds borrowed at that time to do the um, improvements necessary for the commercial and office space and this would cover just a portion of um, those funds um, that were required to um, build out the commercial space on the first floor of the north building and the office space 
and there will be a development agreement on the next council meeting right. the um, that will include um, more details about this. Does this indicate they're not doing as well as we thought? It seems like those commercial areas are doing pretty well. No, they are doing. The problem was that the um, total amount of um, TI improvements to get them ready to lease, um, uh, we, there was no funds put set aside for that portion of it. And I think, Kevin, do you remember the- 1.7 million for the, for the first and the second floor on the North Mixed Use Building. So Renico came up with one, could come up with 1.2. Right. Yeah. Yep. Didn't want to borrow. We didn't borrow any At today's that. rates. To yes. And so obviously the rent will start coming in for the, for those spaces also. We'll have the second floor here shortly coming in for that too. Okay. Roll call. Councilmember Jones. Aye. Knudsen. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Wynn. Aye. All ayes with gross absent. 12 construction services agreement okay. and that's an agreement is to build out the gym space in the Iowa River Landing and is not to exceed $95,710. Resolution please. Resolution approving a construction services agreement with Wagner Construction Services introduced for adoption by Council Member Knutson, seconded by. Second. Second by Jones. Questions or comments? Yes, we, this was under the bid threshold for 147,000, but we did take, uh, we took bids on it just to get a better, the best price. Uh, we had two bids, one from Wagner Construction Services for $95,710, one from Watts Group for $109,255. So both of these entities have done tenant build outs for us down there. So we do recommend the $95,710 to Wagner Construction Services. Roll call, please. Councilmember Marie Knudsen. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Quinn. Aye. Jones. Aye. All ayes with girls absent. RAGBRAI, this ordinance is to is required by each overnight city for the RAGBRAI route. It is only in effect the day of the arrival and the day the riders leave. Ordinance, please. Ordinance number 2023-1008. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Coralville 2011 as previously amended regarding RAGBRAI introduced for first consideration by council member Goodrich seconded by second seconded by when comments or questions roll call please council member Goodrich aye when aye Jones aye Knudsen aye all eyes with gross absent Number 14, Civco Project Urban Renewal Plan. This is the abatement portion of the development agreement of the Civco Project, and the public hearing will be June 27th, 2023. Consider the resolution, please. Resolution setting a public hearing on the Civco Project Urban Renewal Plan. Uh, resolution is introduced for adoption by Council Member Wynn, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Jones. Comments or questions? Roll call, please. Councilmember Quinn? Aye. Jones? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. All ayes with gross absent. 15, Southeast Commercial Area. Consider, let's see, this allows city staff to begin the acquisition process for two properties <coughs> in the Southeast Commercial Area. Consider the resolution. Resolution authorizing acquisition of property interests of two properties in the southeast commercial area introduced for <coughs> adoption by Council Member Jones, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Knutson. Does anyone have comments on this resolution? Yeah, I, this would just start the process of working with the two property owners um, that have not been able to be acquired in the um, southeast commercial area district. Um, there's several steps that would go, the, uh, uh, notice would go to them explaining um, what we're looking to do, um, an appraisal would be done, there are several steps, we'll obviously come back to you with each step, um, we haven't been able to make progress yet, we're hopeful that this um, will start the communications and that um, we can figure out a um, good solution for both entities. 
are we at liberty to know which two property to yeah. look in yep. at? Yep, it's the uh, property that's right next to the the, the uh, viaduct uh, uh, under on First Avenue, and then there's the uh, there's a, a part you know, kind of a mixed use type building that's behind um, the uh, building where. Um, uh, it used to be El Cactus facility. They, they've changed a lot of business change over there. It's, it's the second building in on First Street, it's not on First Avenue. It's the one behind that. And these are owned by two different. Yes, yes, two they different. are two different. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I, I would. I think I we started to discuss this the last time I yes. was here five weeks ago. And just to clarify, it's not that we couldn't come to terms with them. We couldn't couldn't communicate with them exactly. at all. Exactly. <laughs> Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Despite multiple attempts. So I, I guess what, what step that we take now that changed that? This or way bringing in? This sets out a procedure under the state law of communication, um, steps that we need to take. And um, it's the hope that by going through those um, steps and procedures that are outlined, um, that that will help both sides um, understand what um, the procedures and process is and that we wish to go forward with the um, redevelopment of that area. And, um, you know, we'll obviously bring back any communication that we receive to all of you and there will be other further steps that would need to be taken before any actual acquisition would happen. And this will be the city acquire this and then do whatever we please correct just to get that area developed right correct. yeah so the the notices would come from my office not from not uh, from the city itself that well just from the city attorney's office and not from the, the private entity who's been trying to communicate with them okay so if they uh my hope is maybe a, an attorney will get involved and we can have discussions that way mm. thank you for yep. the clarification Roll call, please. Oh, can I have one more comment? Yeah. Um, just, I, I, I hope that acquiring this through eminent domain is still kind of our last choice. Yep. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think that's everybody's intent. I just wanted to make that clear. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I also would like for us to be <coughs> fair mm -hmm. when it comes to, um, you know, the agreement or whatever mm -hmm. price and thing like yep. that. <coughs> Roll call, please. Councilmember Knutson. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Quinn. Aye. Jones. Aye. All ayes with girl Sapson. 16 non bargaining pay scale. This increase of 3.25% on July 1st, 2023, is for employees not covered by a union contract and is equivalent to increase approved recently in union contracts. Consider resolution. Resolution approving an increase in the non-bargaining pay scale effective July 1st, 2023. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Knudsen, seconded by. Second. Seconded by when? Any questions or comments? Yeah, I would just like to say that you know, I really appreciate the staff working to make sure that um, we pay a comp competitive wage and that we take care of all of our employees, um, regardless they are union or non-union. Union. Um, that really speaks to the longevity that we have when it comes to the retain, retention of our staff. Um, so thank you for that work. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilmember Goodrich? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Jones? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. All eyes with girl Sapson. 17 is Forever Green Road 28E agreement, the amended uh, 28E agreement is for the design and construction of the extension of Forever Green Road from the 12th Avenue roundabout to its current intersection at North Liberty Road. Resolution, please. Resolution approving a 28E agreement for Forever Green Road between the city of Coralville and North Liberty, Iowa. Introduced for adoption by mm -hmm. Council Member Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Knudsen. Comments? Yeah, this just outlines um, that the, both cities will <laughs> share in the cost of the road between there. It's almost exactly the same distance between um, 
in Coralville and in North Liberty. And we'll be moving forward with um, the uh, detailed design um, of the project now that we've received some federal funds earmarked for the project to the both cities. Both cities own yeah. all the property? In the um, I think Corville does, um, except, except one small corner, North Liberty does have one development um, property that they need to go across. So there's really only two parcels in the whole stretch would, of two miles that would need to be acquired. <laughs> and we actually have an agreement <laughs> for our portion um, of that one piece that wasn't acquired. Okay. So I think we talked about this maybe when we put in the application. And I thought there was going to be a gap that we wouldn't be able to connect the two roundabouts, basically. But is that right? That's correct. We don't have all of the funds necessary. And this just gets us to the next step. And both cities continue to look for other funding sources um, to continue. One of the parts of the design process will be which direction does it make most sense to come from? Do you come from the west or do you come from the east? Um, because um, unfortunately, there's nothing in between to connect into. So it's not like right. you're trying to connect from one spot to another. It's going to be a dead end until you get the funding to continue. And how big of a gap? Well, the total is, oh, you mean for funding? Well, I, I guess I was, we'll figure that out the, later. But in terms of distance, miles. The distance is two miles. And this will cover 1.75 of it, or how much no, of it will we finish? Um, I, think, I it really depends on which way you go because there's some large waterways that you got to go over, and depending on which direction, those are going to be um, the most expensive part of the process. Sure, sure. Does future development have take in consideration when we build roundabouts and all of that just yep. to see which direction that should be placed and that will determine the, the, the placement of that. Yeah, um, that does. Unfortunately, on about two thirds or three quarters of the direction, there's no development uh, that will occur. Um, it From the east, or from, excuse me, from the west, North Liberty has a large section of it, which will go through their um, wastewater plant site. Okay. From our direction, it goes through the Pratt parcel that's already developed. And so there's very little, there's some in the middle that will um, create new uh, development. Most of it will be um, just the arterial street connection that will help the whole um, region. So a roundabout is necessary yep. to make that flow, yep. traffic flow better. Oh, yes. Hold on, the roundabout's are already there, aren't they? Yeah, the one in 12th is and the one at yeah. um, First Avenue. First Avenue. Yep. Yeah, those are done. <coughs> Roll call, please. Pass over Jones. Aye. Knudsen. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Wynn. Aye. All ayes with gross absent. Number 18, joint forensic analysis team cyber team jfact 28e agreement this 28e agreement is for the coralville police department to work in cooperation with law enforcement agencies <coughs> of the entities named in the resolution to analyze electronic data to aid in the investigation <coughs> of crime as a member of the Joint Forensic Analysis Cyber Team and join their capabilities and resources to better serve the public while sharing skills, equipment, knowledge, and revenue. Consider the resolution. Resolution approving a 2080 agreement between Johnson County, the University of Iowa, the City of Iowa City, Iowa, the City of Coralville, Iowa, and the City of North Liberty, Iowa, for the creation and operation of the Joint Forensic Analysis Cyber Team, JFACT. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Wynn, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Jones. Comments or questions? What problem is this fixing? <laughs> Pardon? What problem is this fixing? Chief, do you want to just address what? 
Chief Crone is coming to the microphone. This is just so we can share resources. This is the cell phone computer extraction that we that you approved the person to right. go out and join the JFAC team. This is just so we can operate. So he can that. do his job. He or she can do his job. Yeah, and and share the equipment and the resources and the knowledge. The other three entities have been in um, operation for how long, Chief? A uh, year and a half. Almost and two years. So we'll be the last of those entities joining. Okay. Roll call, please. Customer Goodrich. Aye. Quinn? Aye. Jones? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. All ayes with gross absent. 19, Bridgewater Subdivision Access Agreements. This sets an access route for the air shafts located on the outlots in the Bridgewater Subdivision. Consider the resolution. Resolution approving access agreements for river products at the Bridgewater subdivision is introduced for adoption by Council Member Jones, seconded by. Second. Second. Seconded by Knutson. Uh, questions or comments? So, what are these? Okay, so they're, they're, um, we acquired the outlot. River products over the years has mineral rights all right, the way. Right over towards even by where you live yeah, over there yeah. so these are air shafts that are necessary to do mining underground which wouldn't if they ever happen would I've heard would be 40 to 50 years in the future so what this what this does is uh, the air shafts were in outlots that the city acquired from uh, Mike Evans and his team who did the Bridgewater subdivision and uh, they didn't get the access agreements done and before that happened so their signatory one of the access routes that we really concentrated on is off of hidden ridge drive which is the southerly portion if you remember a couple years ago that was where all the trees were removed and we had the issues down there towards the interstate well uh they put a plat together that kind of went through the area we got all fixed up so the the uh, they they did a route that went farther southerly off that road to avoid what we had worked to put in there so um they staked it out, and I think Scott actually went out there and looked at it. Scott or Amy looked at, went out there and looked at it to make sure it was out of the area where the uh, trees and the, there's a big oak tree out there that we were missing and, and leaving that there. So these are just uh, act so that River Products would have access to these these uh, air shafts whenever they do it in the future. So they don't actually do it. This is just access this only. Is they don't access, do there, any There's nothing. There's yeah. I mean they have min mineral rights yeah. in the right. early yes. 1900s. I yeah. think so. Okay. But, yeah, we'll all be gone before that happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, roll call, please. Councilmember Quinn. Aye. Jones. Aye. Knutson. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. All ayes with um, gross absent. Twenty is engineering services <coughs> agreement. This agreement is for the review of stormwater design calculations and plans submitted to the City of Compliance with the post-construction stormwater ordinance and to perform post-construction inspections as needed, not to exceed $600 per month. Consider the resolution. Resolution approving an engineering services agreement with McClure Engineering Incorporated for monthly stormwater design review services. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Knutson, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gwen. Comments? Roll call, please. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Gwen? Aye. All ayes with gross absent. 21, cooperative agreement. This agreement is for installation of fiber optic communication between the City of Coralville and Department of Transportation's Intelligent Transportation System Infrastructure. Resolution, please. Approving a cooperative agreement with the Iowa Department of Transportation, DOT, for fiber optic communications between Iowa DOT and the Coralville Intelligent Transportation System, ITS, infrastructure. Uh, resolution introduced for adoption by Council Member Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Customer Knudsen. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Quinn. Aye. Jones. Aye. All ayes with gross absent. 22, amendment to financial services agreement. This agreement is for the financial services provided by Chap 
Piper Sandler and Company for 2023 general obligation refunding and corporate purpose bonds, both taxable and tax exempt for refinancing bond series 2018E, bond series 2018I, and to acquire the field house. Consider the resolution. Resolution approving an amendment to the financial services agreement with the Piper Sander and Company, introduced for adoption by Council Member Wynn, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Jones. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Councilman Goodrich? Aye. Wynn? Aye. Jones? Aye. Knudsen? Aye. I'll pass um, with eyes with gross absent. Consider a motion to approve the consent calendar. Madam, May uh, Madam Mayor, could I uh, ask I that uh, GG, it says approved bill is for May 23rd, should be June 13th mm -hmm. for GG. Okay. Oh. It is on here, June 13th. Oh, mine says, mine yeah, says, mine, May. mine's not. Okay. Oh, <laughs> mine well, does too. Okay, so okay. we make it, it's yep. for June 13th. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would anyone like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented or amended? Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I would like to ask Council to consider a motion to approve the, ca the consent calendar as amended, A to GG. Who would like to second that? Second. Second by Knudsen. Um, and roll call, please. Councilmember Jones. Aye. Knudsen. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Wynn. Aye. All in favor um, said aye with gross absent. Uh, city administrator's report, please. Yes, um, we've had several great activities happen over the last um, few days and then coming up this week, and just like to point those out, we had the opportunity last Friday to host the RAGBRAI pre-ride committee and review our plans for the upcoming RAGBRAI visit. And um, it was very, our plans were very well received and it was great to have them here reviewing um, what we plan to do. And so we just look forward um, to working the next month to implement all of the plans, remind um, people that we can still continue to use um, homes for um, hosting some of our visitors um, that could be either people using um, staying inside your home or just staying in your yard and that they're they don't want to stay in the main campgrounds we can also use uh, volunteers uh, we are looking for um, we have over 900 individual slots um, that need to be filled in and so hopefully if people can take one or two of those that would be great you can go to coralvilleragbride.com and there's information on there of what all the different opportunities that you can help out. This last Sunday, we had a great event um, with um, Rex Brandstetter um, providing history on the 8th Avenue um, tour. It was just so much fun, and we had lots of residents um, show up for that. So just thank the 150th committee for putting it together, Rex, for his um, research and, and what he's doing, and then the Gill family for hosting everyone at the end of the tour. So thank for them. And then the wheat pacing has finally started, and so this is a great opportunity. Um, all week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, there's opportunities all around the community, and um, on the library website, they have the locations, or you can call the library and they'll um, update you on where they're going to be at. We're looking for people that are interested in helping out in this great project. Um, hopefully, people have been able to see the one at the library, which I think is just outstanding and shows what the future ones are going to be like. And then um, on Saturday, is Thursday, Saturday is the um, day um, that um, the the faces will be installed on the three schools, Kirkwood, Northwest Junior High, and Coralville Central. And I got a chance to see some of, um, some of the images and they are just so great. And I, um, there was one of the days I was at the library, there was a, a girl that'll be entering seventh grade and they were telling her that she could have her picture taken. And she was a little nervous about going to junior high and she was so um, excited that her picture would be included on the outside of the building. So this, there's a lot of great um, opportunities here for people to 
help out if you can or just to go around the community and see um, what the uh, um, what pictures were chosen right thank you thank you that's uh, you couldn't have said it better I appreciate all, all that you commented on and Kelly we always really appreciate all the work and all the involvement that you yourself have in these things I um, wanted to also mention there's two other things with the um, Corable 150 sesquicentennial. One is on this Thursday at Back Pocket, and it's connected with RAGBRAI also, and also um, Isaac uh, Campbell, the man who's doing the wheat pasting, will be there to talk about it, and there will be a special uh, ribbon cutting for uh, beer that Back Pocket has produced, and it's called Cheers to the Years. So it's for the 150th for Coralville, and then 50 years for Ragbri. Um, they'll, it'll be a great time. There'll be special music, and as I mentioned, uh, Isaac Campbell will be there to talk more about the art that he's doing around the city. Um, invite, everyone's invited to that. And then also this Tuesday, June 20th, Nick Westergaard, who happens to be our mayor's husband, will be hosting an event called How to Tell a Story. It's a workshop at the library at 6 p.m. That's June 20th, which is this Tuesday at 6 p.m. And it's um, hearing him talk about it's really going to be fun. He's a professor at the university and has done a, done a lot of work and, um, on learning to tell a story. And he mentioned tell, learning to tell a story in five minutes. So um, that'll be fun to go to that workshop. And you can look on Instagram, um, the library, and also Coralville.org should be covering those things. Uh, thanks. I just want to ask the... City attorneys, if they have a report. I have nothing. nothing. Okay, and committee council members. Uh, would you like to start? You're down there all by yourself, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> I sure can. Um, start, it's my first meeting since I lost my mom five weeks ago. Uh, learned about the events uh, at a meeting and just want to thank everybody for their support that night and their help in particular Mitch, who was able to help me get my dad to the hospital, and uh, Kelly for taking care of my bike that night, uh, and really appreciate all your words. I mean, she was 88, lived a long, great life, but kind of died suddenly and, and, and somewhat unexpectedly. Um, I had a meeting with the sustainability group this uh, last week, I guess, and remarkably, they've been awarded, uh, or the six county area has been awarded a two million kind of planning, climate planning grant. And for perspective, the state of New York got three million for this. This is in part, of course, because our state government was not interested in any of these funds. We're all set for climate change, I think, in their perspective. So we'll, we have a good opportunity to start planning for, for climate change down the road. And this is a, um, you know, a good step in the right direction and kind of a good opportunity. Um, mostly, I think, Johnson and Lynn County, but certainly other counties. And um, Lastly, I, I was able to take a vacation a few weeks ago um, to a very bike-friendly countries, I guess, Belgium and the Netherlands, and uh, we, we were on a bike and barge cruise, and it just makes you realize when the culture is biking, the more people that bike, the safer you are, it's because all the drivers become aware. So just one more reason to, to go out and, and bike if, if you're able. Um, the more of us that are out there, the safer it becomes is what, what I concluded from that, from that trip. And that's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank yeah, you. Very good, very good. Council Member Wynn. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I have a few things. So our summer lunch program started today. Um, it started the first day today, and it's going to continue all the way until August um, 11. Um, there are a few days that we will be not, we will not be serving lunch. Um, that is the 4th of July and the Friday that Ragbri is going through our city. Um, it's just going to be crazy. And so we'll, those are the two days that um, we will not be serving. Um, other than that, every week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, any buddy, any children from 18 and under can come and eat with us for free. 
um, caretaker adult and caretaker to come eat with us. And then there will be activity following lunch. Lunch will be from 11.30 to 1 o'clock. Um, and activity rotate um, throughout the, the, the day of the week. Um, today, it, uh, it was game, so lawn game, yard game. Um, you know, there's some Jenga uh, playing inside the building. Tomorrow, uh, we will walk down to the, the rec center and we'll be able to play basketball, volleyball, um, all sort of thing um, inside the rec center. And then on Thursday, we will provide our own activity at the pantry. And then on Friday, Antelope Lending Library will be there. Today was the, the, the library. The library was there. Um, and so we had a great turnout. We fed more than 30 folks, um, which is great. Uh, please help us spread the words. Everyone is welcome. And again, it's 11.30 to um, 1. And we are not serving lunch on Monday. So please remember that. If you come on Monday, you will not get lunch. <laughs> um, summer reading program also started. It kick-started um, a week ago, but it's not too late to sign up. All you have to do is, um, if you already have a, um, a membership with the library, like a library card, then you just go and sign up on Beanstack, or you can walk to the library and sign up that way on uh, paper and pens as well. And then our Corville Center for the Performing Arts have um, a, a program or a play that is um, put together by the Young Footlighter and it's going to be Disney Junior Frozen, um, June 23rd to 25th. So it's this weekend. Is this weekend? Yes, it's this weekend. I can't believe it's <laughs> already mid of June. Um, so no, please. I think it's two weeks. Two weeks? Is it two yeah. weeks? Oh, today is the 13th. Yes, yeah, so in yeah. two weeks. Um, and so get tickets, go out and support um, the youngster in our, in our community. And I just would like to personally thank, um, you know, the, the city staff, spe specifically um, the street crew for making um, the transportation light work so well for the graduation for the three high school. Mm -hmm. I myself have a high school graduate, and it was 7 o'clock at night on a Saturday. So it's not the easiest to get around, um, you know, Iowa River Landing with all the construction and all the games and all the activities that going on. Um, but I have the feedback that I have heard um, to, from folks, especially folks that live in North Liberty and also in Iowa City that have kids that graduate, um, you know, their graduation take place in the IL. They was quite impressed with um, the way that traffic flow. Um, yes, there was a little bit of a wait, um, but, you know, um, it's expected, um, but it's nothing like a bottleneck. And so thank you for all the hard work, um, and thank you for the heads up. I think that helps a lot. Um, so communication is key. I really, really appreciate that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Council Member Jones. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I have nothing else to add to what's all been right. said. So thank well, you. Well, thank you. I'll now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Knutson, second by Jones. Meeting adjourned. Oh, we have, we have to say all in favor? Aye. Aye. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got it,